Okay, children, we will deal with the chemistry class 10, that is the chemical equations. Uh, in the nature, we will see many changes that will be taking place. Many changes will be taking place around ourselves, and uh, these changes, change may take place regarding the size, change may be taking place regarding the shape, change may be taking place regarding the color and change may be taking place regarding the state and uh, some changes they can happen within no time and some changes it will go on through a long time and some changes we can get back again and some changes we cannot get back all these changes if we categorize we can uh, classify them as desirable changes and undesirable changes natural changes and man-made changes fast changes and slow changes and uh, some changes are periodic and some changes are non-periodic some changes are slow and some changes are fast and all these changes we can again classify them into two groups that is a physical change and a chemical change we can classify them into two groups one comes the physical change and one comes the chemical change physical change as if we take there won't be any change in the composition only we can see there will be a change in the size of the body or we can see there will be a change in the shape of a body or we can see there will be a change in the state of the body. And in the physical chain, no new substance will be formed. And it is a reversible change. We can get back the substance again. For example, if you take a melting of ice, it is an example of a physical chain. So ice, when it is a solid form, it can be converted into liquid form, that is we are calling it as a water. Again, water of freezing, we are going to get back the ice. That is, it is a reversible change. It is called the physical change. Same manner, if you see the chemical changes, chemical changes are the changes in which there will be a change in the composition. That is, a new substance will be formed. And it is an irreversible change. For example, if you take digestion of food, or if you see ripening of mango, ripening of mango is a chemical change. Again, we are not going to get back that change again. And same manner, if you see the breaking of glass, breaking of glass means again we are going to get the glass again. So that one we can classify it as a physical change. And same manner, breaking of ice is also a physical change. Now, how the chemical change is going to take place, we will see here. If you do one activity, that is, uh, we can say it as uh, activity 1. I am taking a quick line which is called as a calcium oxide and uh, I am taking a beaker and in this beaker I am putting a small piece of calcium oxide in this and I am taking 100 ml of water and I am pouring the 100 ml of water in this one and slowly what happens the calcium oxide which we are calling it as a quick line it completely dissolves in water and we are going to get a colorless liquid and if you touch the bottom of the beaker we are going to feel somewhat hot so why we are feeling hot some heat will be released and this reaction we are going to call them as exothermic reaction exothermic reaction is taking place that is we are taking calcium oxide we are making it react with water and we are getting a new substance which is a colorless liquid and that new substance which we are getting it is called as a calcium hydroxide and again from this calcium hydroxide 
you cannot get back calcium oxide and you cannot get back water. That is, it is an irreversible change. We cannot get back these substances. And these substances we are calling it as reactants and these substances we are calling it as a product. And uh, since heat is really evolved, we are calling this reaction as an exothermic reaction. That is, two or more substances are combined and a single substance is formed and this reaction also we can call it as a combination reaction. And same manner, if you go for one more activity, that is activity 2. In this, in this we will take two substances. One we will take as sodium sulfate and we will take as a barium chloride. These are the two substances we are taking and uh, we will take two tubes and one more test tube we will take. In this test tube we add a small product of Na2SO4 and same manner we will take barium chloride in this and in this also barium chloride and we will take some 100 ml of water and put some water in this one and same manner put some water in this second meter also then just to change the two test tubes and hold up the sodium sulfate and barium chloride they are going to dissolve in water and they are going to get a liquid and that liquid you are calling it a happy will be colorless liquid you are going to get now you take one more meter that is the third meter and in this this one we are calling it as a sodium sulfate uh, sodium sulfate solution and same now this one we are calling it as a barium chloride solution two solutions are formed one is called as a sodium sulfate solution and other is called as a barium chloride solution. Now we make the third test tube. In this third test tube, we put a small quantity of sodium sulfate solution into this one. That is, uh, if you put to this level. And again, we take the solution which is present in the test, second test tube, that is barium chloride solution. And we put a small quantity of barium sulfate solution also in this test tube. Now this is a Na2SO4 solution plus BaCl2 solution is present in this third test tube. Now you shake it. Whenever you shake it, the solution is going to dissolve. It is going, both the solutions are going to combine with each other. And after some time, you are going to observe that some precipitation is formed below this test tube. Some precipitation is formed. That is, we can uh, write it as PG, precipitation is formed. And some colorless liquid will be floating above this precipitation. And this colorless liquid which is floating above this precipitation, that solution is nothing but sodium chloride solution. And this precipitate, whatever it is formed, it is called as barium sulfate solution. Sodium chloride solution is a colorless liquid and the precipitate which is settled at the bottom of the test tube we can call it as barium sulfate precipitate therefore the reaction is taking place between sodium sulfate and barium chloride and if you write the reaction it will be can write it in this form that is you are taking sodium sulfate plus barium chloride both of them are reacting and a product is formed that product is NaCl plus BaSO4 this is the product which we are getting so from this we can understand that the chemical reaction is taking place 
some precipitate is formed. Generally, both of them are colorless liquid. These colorless liquids, when they have combined together, some precipitation is formed. So from this we can understand, when a chemical reaction is taking place, there is a possibility for the precipitation to occur. That is, precipitation is formed. In the first activity, what we have seen, when a quick line, that is calcium oxide reacted with water, when you touch the bottom of the tissue, you are feeling somewhat hot. So, heat is evolved in that. So, in a chemical reaction, heat can be evolved, or precipitation also can be formed. And this one, if you see, this is a double displacement reaction. That is, sulfate which is present here, it is going and attracting to the barium. See here, sulfate is shifted to barium and chlorine shifted to sodium. So, displacement is taking place. Displacement is taking place for, for both the components. Therefore, we call this reaction as double displacement reaction. Same manner, if we go for one more activity, that is activity 3. In this activity 3, I will take a metal which is known as sodium, or I will take a will go for zinc because sodium is very reactive and uh, it is not possible for us to do the reaction with the sodium because it is very reactive whenever it is uh, touching with the atmosphere also it should be there is a chance for sodium to explode therefore we will go for zinc which is a lesser reactive matter and we will take zinc and the same manner we will take one residue and in this you will put a small piece of Zinc in this, this one we are calling it as zinc and we will take the, some acid, let us take the HCl acid and this acid, we have to put small drops, some drops of acids into this test tube and when we are putting, we should be careful because this hydrochloric acid, when it is dry, when the drops of hydrochloric acid are directly added to this zinc metal, the reaction will be very vigorous and sometimes the reaction also will be fast. Therefore, when you are adding the drops of hydrochloric acid, we should be, some care should be taken. That is, you take a, some ink filler and the help of that you take some of HCl acid and put the drops of HCl acid throughout the walls of the test tube. Slowly you release the drops of the acid towards the walls of the test tube and they will be falling and slowly it is going to react with the zinc metal which is kept inside and immediately when the acid is coming and the reacting with the zinc then we are going to see some flames will be coming out the reaction is going to start and when the flames are coming out you take a, you bring one burning matchstick and you put near the mouth of this test tube Whenever the burning mask is kept near the mouth of the test tube, the burning mask is going to put off with a pop sound. That is, pop sound will be observed. What is the, what we can say with, the, with this pop sound, we can say that the gas which is coming out is nothing but the hydrogen gas. Only the hydrogen gas, when it is reacted with the heat or flame, pop sound will be there. So from this we can understand that the gas is going to be liberated and that gas which is coming out is nothing but hydrogen gas. How we are saying that it is a hydrogen gas by putting a burning mastic near the mouth of this test tube. The burning mastic is going to put out with a pop sound. So what we have observed in the chemical reaction that has taken place in activity 3, when a chemical reaction is taking place, there is a chance or some of the gas can be avoided. And if you write the equation, the equation we can write like this. That is Jn plus HCl gives rise to JnCl2 plus H2. So this is the hydrogen gas which is liberated. And if you balance it, you can make it is 2 here. That is 2 hydrogens are present here and 2 hydrogens are present here, 2 chlorines are present here and 2 chlorines are present here. 
and one zinc metal is present here, and here also one zinc metal is present here, and we can say that this uh, equation is balanced. So, two, three types of reactions we have seen. In the first reaction, we have seen that the reaction is exothermic, where the heat is evolved. And the second activity we have seen where the precipitation is formed and the third reaction we have seen where the gas is evolved. And even if we touch the bottom of this test tube, then also we can say that it is going to be hot. That is, in this case also, heat can be evolved. Heat can be evolved even in this case also. Therefore, if you make the three equations, that is a CaO, plus H2O gives rise to CaOH minus plus heat is a evolved that heat evolved can be represented with the Q then again second equation is to take sodium sulphate plus barium chloride gives rise to sodium chloride plus barium sulphate and this one we are calling as a precipitation and this is a colorless solution and the third activity we have taken zinc and we have added some HCl to it and we are making zinc chloride plus H2 some hydrogen gas is liberated I need to to India balance. So JN plus two HCl gives rise to JN CL2 plus H2. That is hydrogen gas is liberated. Once again we will see this one. During a chemical reaction is taking place, two or more substances are going to combine together and a single substance can be formed. This one we are going to mark as a combination reaction where a new substance is formed, single new substance is formed. And here it is an exothermic reaction we can call. Now here two substances are reacting and again for it also we are getting new two new substances and this reaction we can call it as a double expressional reaction. And same one and here also you can take general presence here gives rise to ZNCl2 plus H2 and here it is not a double displacement reaction, it is a displacement reaction only because chlorine is going and attract to G. So three types of reactions we have seen.